Hi, I'm Jeff Ray, your host for Economic Outlook, and I want to welcome you to our show. Thank you for joining us each week as we discuss the people, the companies, and the projects driving the region's economic growth. Overall, employment in computer and information technology occupations is projected to grow much faster than the average for all occupations from 2022 to 2032. That means it's critical to teach youth, adults, and educators skills in computer science so that our region is ready for those jobs. We're talking tech and the efforts to locally prepare workers for the jobs of tomorrow, coming up on Economic Outlook. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, close to 400,000 openings are projected nationally each year on average in computer and information technology occupations more than in any other industry. The median annual wage for that group of occupations is nearly double that of all other jobs. But communities need to be ready for those opportunities and need to develop, attract, and train that workforce. The South End Code School is doing just that as they seek to eliminate the barriers between people and technology and jobs. We're diving deeper into that work today with Catlin Bolger, the Program Development Coordinator at South Bend Code School, and Alex Sedenai, the co-founder of the South Bend Code School and CodeWorks. Welcome, guys. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Well, we've had South Bend Code School before. We, we're big fans of the work uh, that you're doing. Thank and so you. thank you for coming back today. And we thought just a, an appropriate time to kind of have this conversation. A lot happening in the tech space. The job numbers uh, in the future uh, really project that. And you guys are doing a lot to prepare that. So we're going to have a conversation about that today. But um, Alex, let's start your way. So if, so, if somebody sure. didn't see one of our last shows or isn't familiar with South Bend, um, code School, tell us a little bit about South Bend Code School. Yeah, sure. So South Bend Code School um, is a business we started in 2015 here in South Bend, Indiana, hence the name. Um, and our mission is really around eliminating barriers between people and technology and making technology training equitable. Um, we focus on uh, basically technology platforms from uh, the K through 12 standpoint, so you know elementary, middle, high school. And in recent years, we've actually expanded into some adult and workforce training as well. Um, and so really, we're just looking at all of the different ways to increase technology aptitude within a community and better the chances of people obtaining those high dollar jobs that you mentioned in the intro. Great. Kellen, talk for a second about your role as South Bend Code School and what you're doing there. Yeah, absolutely. So I am helping expand our program and making sure that we get the word out for not only our education in the academic space, but also when we talk about workforce development and how we can make sure that we are filling those technology wage jobs here in our region as well. Great. So, um, so, so uh, naive me, I'm, not, I'm an old guy, so the technology <laughs> doesn't always come easy to me. But um, doesn't all that happen in Silicon Valley? Don't, do you really need <laughs> people here? Talk about just s sort of the need of, of uh, from a workforce standpoint in the, in the community to, to do exactly what you do to train people for those jobs. Sure, yeah. I mean, the, um, the need for technology talent is pretty ubiquitous at this point. Um, it's not just a Silicon Valley skill set. Um, the truth of the matter is every company today is a technology company whether they want to be or not. You have to have some sort of knowledge of how to get yourself out on the internet or use different technology platforms. Um, so it's pretty ingrained in the, the modern day economy. Um, it's, not, it's no longer sort of a standalone specialized skill. Um, and really having knowledge of technology helps every job, every skill set, you know, kind of no matter uh, what sort of position you're in. Um, and we've seen that with a lot of our adult learners. Uh, we have a lot of adult learners who are in a field you might not consider a, a super intensive technology field, but they say, hey, this is coming more into my orbit these days, and I, I would like to know more about what some of this stuff consists of. So it helps me with my, my job on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, Alex, I want to stay with you for a second. Sure. So, so talk, uh, j just help us understand your career path a little bit. So you're, <laughs> you're one of the co-founders here. Obviously, as a young kid, you decide you want to be a tech guy, right? And nope, you uh, absolutely were going to have this not. path. Give, it, give us a, <laughs> a feel for your journey. Sure, sure, yeah. So I, I actually uh, started um, on the, the very opposite end of the spectrum. I was very into music when I was growing up and um, uh, you know, played music, played in a band, um, and I ended up going to Indiana University. Uh, my, my degree is actually in um, recording arts, so nothing to do with computer science at all. Um, and 
there are many studies that show you know sort of which mindsets and aptitudes sort of gravitate towards computer science. Um, interestingly enough, mathematicians is one which is really obvious, but the other uh, most popular one is musicians. Um, and so, just sort of in a roundabout way, I wound up getting interested in technology and. Um, you know, started picking up some of the skills myself and uh, took a couple programs online and in person and uh, taught myself a lot and wound up getting to the point where I found myself in the world of technology rather than the world of music and uh, just saw a lot of the opportunity there. You know, it was a, a real game changer for me and my um, trajectory. And I think starting South Bend Code School with uh, my two co-founders, that was sort of my my way into that was just seeing the benefit of you know being in that world and thinking man I wish I had known about this earlier and I think it was really obvious to me to see the connection between what I was doing and the benefits to a community um, in terms of you know what I was providing from an economic standpoint and you know what the community was benefiting from from having those skills around. Great. Catlin, let's come come your way. So, so you you're, you all are in this role of trying mm -hmm. to find those Alexes who <laughs> aren't sure what they want to do, and, and maybe give them the skills. Uh, j yeah. Just talk about what it is that excites you so much about sort of finding those kids and and plugging them into those program opportunities there. Absolutely. Um, I think the biggest part for me is technology is everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. Like Alex said, so we don't think of how many things are touched by any sort of code or computer science. So introducing students to that opportunity that they may not even know that it's exciting or interesting for them. Um, Alex said kind of that mathematician um, music side, but also introducing kids who are into arts and language arts and showing them how that can transition into a full-time career for them or even just a hobby. So I think that's the most exciting part yeah, I think for that, that. I think there's also sort of a perceived barrier um, into technology skill sets, whether it's you know an elementary school student or an adult who's looking at transitioning careers. Um, and one of the things we wanted to do when we started South Bend Code School was eliminate that perceived barrier, or at least reduce it to a point where someone felt like they could cross it. Um, you know, it's, we, we, we get questions from middle and high school students all the time. You know, first day of class when they do something like this, they're like, hey, I, I'm not really good at math. Am I going to be good at this? And it's like, yeah, you can still be good at this. I think one of the things you have to realize is technology and coding specifically is such a vast field. There are so many different verticals you can find a place in. And some of it does involve a lot of math. Some of it involves more uh, creativity and design types of skills. Um, and some of it is very uh, human focused, right? So being able to interact with people and understand what are their wants and needs out of a technology platform or how are they going to interact with this technology platform. Um, and I think that's a little bit of a, a hard gap to fill a lot in technology. A lot of times people who are very technical maybe don't um, don't get along with other people very well sometimes. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like, hey, I do get along with people and I think I could get into this technology stuff, we've got programs for you. You know, this is this is a field for you. Yeah. Talk a little bit about is because as Alex mentioned, it, this is a, a a pretty wide thing. When we talk yes. tech or computer science or whatever, there's about a hundred thousand different <laughs> ways probably you can go with it. So sure. so uh, so so for that parent who wants to get their kid involved, or for that kid who isn't sure what they're interested in, talk uh, talk to them about how you. Um, how you help introduce them to all these to sort of find that uh, potential path there. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I'll start. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I think the exposure piece, because mm -hmm. there are so many things and we don't know what we don't know mm -hmm. until we have an opportunity to play with it or figure out. So how we kind of approach some of that is in the younger grade levels, video games. We're kind of meeting students and individuals of what is an interest to them at that point um, and showing them the different opportunities to if video games are what you're interested in. Right. We kind of go with Scratch, um, which is a black-based coding program, um, and they can create games themselves. So they can actually see characters move across the screen, they can add sounds and things like that. And then as you get older, um, maybe in that workforce, just an opportunity to try all different things and be like, oh, okay, so this is really fun to me because I had 
a taste of what that is like. So just, I think the biggest thing is opening the door and the willingness to learn um, and choose something new. It's just like picking a book, you know? Yeah. And I think for our younger ages, we have a program right now. Um, we're working more with uh, educators. Uh, both the states of Indiana and Michigan in 2019 added uh, computer science as a rec for their standardized testing. Mm -hmm. So um, during the pandemic, we had a lot of educators reach out and say, hey, can you help us bring this to our school or my classroom, or how do I integrate this into what I'm doing? Um, and so we have a program right now, um, an educator training program that folks can sign up for um, on our website. They can find more information about it. Um, but if, if you're a teacher who wants to know how to do some of those things that we're talking about, about getting kids interested in technology, and you're interested in maybe integrating it into your existing curriculum or doing cross-curricular activities with it, we have a program right now that educators can sign up for for free and we will train them up on how to do this stuff, give them curriculum, um, and provide them support uh, for a whole year, a school year um, for that um, in hopes that they carry it on beyond the, the year. Sure. Uh, so I'm interested as I'm reading about just some of the things you're, you're doing and some of the partnerships out there. I know you're in the Southland Empowerment Zone and some other spots. So, so uh, think about just schools, uh, you know, in, in particular, like there's, there's any school probably um, works. I mean, you know, kind of the highest performing, lowest performing kids. The, uh, it, it just speak a little bit about it. like, um, is there a ideal customer, climate, uh, client, school, whatever? Yeah. Um, talk to us a little bit about that. I think it's actually, so if we think of school as a whole, um, it doesn't matter where the school is. If it's a rural school, um, if it is a lower income school, it's the same skills that we're teaching reading, writing, mm -hmm. um, math, just exposing kids. So yeah. that's really the biggest thing. And it is amazing what kids can pick up and how quickly they can pick it up if they have the opportunity. So I think that's the biggest thing is just allowing students that opportunity to try something then it takes a whole nother level for them and just providing that opportunity. So there's really no ideal client. It's somebody who wants to incorporate it and sees the benefit in it because I didn't have that growing up in school. We had no computer. Our right. computer classes included typing and yeah, that was right. about it. So having those opportunities I wish I had when I was a kid instead of mm learning it as an adult, but I'm so thankful to have the opportunity as an adult to learn it as well and find applicable things for me. I think that <clears throat> it's also really important to articulate why it's important for kids at a younger age to get exposed to computer science. I think first and foremost, the reason is to create and instill belief in them that this is something they could do should they get, gain interest in it later in life. There are so many kids who haven't seen this, haven't seen computer science, haven't done anything with coding, and they get to high school and they already feel like this isn't really for me. Especially when you look at demographics around um, female and minority participants in computer science, mm -hmm. which is an area that's extremely lacking. Um, so, so getting kids in earlier and exposing to the, them to this is extremely important from that, just creating that belief. Um, and then there's also the aspect of what do we as a society and an economy need in our coders of the future? Um, so there's actually a book called Coders that's really good for anyone who wants to learn a little bit more about what the world of coding is like. I believe the author's name is Clive Thompson. Um, but he articulates in there that we created this world, this business world that's largely built on all of these technologies. And as technology advances, we're going to need people to maintain those technologies, which is important. You know, think of that as like, you have to have someone maintaining the plumbing in a house, otherwise it's gonna go bad, the house is gonna deteriorate. So you need someone who can take care of those kinds of things, but then you also need the people who are gonna create in sort of the high-tech uh, spaces of the future. And those are the things like artificial intelligence, um, machine learning, when you hear about the blockchain and things like that, those are spaces that need voices tomorrow. They don't have all the voices yet today, but there's gonna need to be a need for voices, very diverse voices in those spaces tomorrow that we just have to cultivate today. Otherwise, 
the diversity and inclusion in those spaces simply isn't going to exist. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting, I think back to my own school experience, I've taken Cobalt and Fortran and a few of those. I don't, I don't, other than remembering the name, I don't remember anything <laughs> from them. But, but I also thought it, it was hard to make it real for me and to understand sort of how it applied to real life. And it sure. sounds like I think you, th there's a much better connection to today heading that way. So as you introduce students to this, they sort of pique their interest. You, you, you're sort of doing um, basic entry level. We want to get you interested up to some more sophisticated um, skill sets. So t talk about sort of this, the spectrum of sort of um, entry level to high level that sure, you're providing. So. Sure, so one of the things we've set out to do um, in the last few years is really create and establish a solid pipeline within our community um, of, of places students of varying technical aptitudes can go to kind of hone their skills and grow in this space. So we started a program, we piloted the program in 2020, I think it was called Intro to Careers in Coding. And uh, it was geared towards adult learners um, who were looking at a possible career change. And so um, that program is designed to give you a taste. It's just four classes, four 90 minute classes in the evening, one day a week over the course of a month. And uh, that program is really designed to give participants a taste of sort of four different spaces in tech with some hands-on experience and some description around what you could expect from a job in that vertical. Um, and our goal with that is to inform them, um, inform participants what they could expect from something like that and give them the knowledge they need to decide, is this something I want to continue to invest time and money in to grow my skill set? Great. We're going to take a quick break in the studio. We're going to go out into the field. George Lapinotis, my co-host, is out with a, some further insight into tech. George, let me toss it to you. Thanks, Jeff. I'm here near Notre Dame's campus, and I'm joined today by Dave Russo of Trek 10. Dave, thanks for being with us. Of course. Dave, when I heard that I was interviewing a director of delivery for a company that does business with an Amazon subsidiary, I thought, great, I like packages. But that's not really what Trek 10 does. Would you tell us a little bit about what Trek 10 does and how you integrate with AWS? Yes, uh, Trek 10 is a premier partner with AWS, and as clients have moved themselves to the cloud, we help deliver whatever they need to do within the cloud. So not delivering packages, but delivering code and delivering projects for them. So when we talk about AWS, it's Amazon Web Services, Correct. and it is a provider of cloud-based technology. Correct. We're seeing more and more where our businesses and even our homes are not relying on hardware at our location, but rather on that connection to the cloud. Yes. That integration isn't seamless, as you've described to me before we went on the air and lost me very quickly. <laughs> how do we, how does that work? How can someone say, okay, I want to be on the cloud? That's where you guys come in. Correct. They've made the choice to go to the cloud already, and there's a few different cloud providers. And I said, we're focused on AWS. Once they've made that choice, whatever they want to build there, we can take care of for them. Uh, as, the, as they're learning on what they want to do there, they'll talk to us, they'll come up with the project, and we'll just deliver that for them. So they'll say, we have a need, and we think that AWS is our solution, and you guys will help connect or deliver that product. Correct. All right. Very good, I'm getting there. It's taken me a while, but I'm getting there. So as we talk about that service, um, I know you said uh, you've been in the South Bend area for quite a while. This is yes. your third location here? Correct. Founded in 2013? 2013. All right. And uh, here at Innovation Park, where we are at today, um, you guys have a very cool office space. We, uh, we were joking that it's always Christmas. Yes. And, um, you know, there's games and toys. It looks very much like a Silicon Valley startup, or what I would envision one to sure. look like. Um, why is that? What, do you, what is it about your culture and this area that really helps you guys thrive? I think culture is the big selling point to Track 10. We, we don't take ourselves too seriously. We're very skilled. We are experts at what we do, but we have fun while we're doing it. And, and the, that's the whole point. Don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah, it's actually very evident around here that you guys have a lot of fun with yeah. your day-to-day -day stuff. And not everybody's here, right? I mean, you guys have about 75 employees. Correct. And some of them are working remotely. I'd say half the company's remote. Yeah, that's great. But you're based here in South Bend, and, and you, in addition to being a part of the economy, you actually provide something secondary, 
Let's talk about the uh, training services that you provide. Yeah, we were lucky enough to receive a large grant uh, from the state of Indiana, the Ready Grant. Uh, we were part of that with uh, InFocus and South Bend Code School. And our portion of the training program is to get people involved, learn about AWS, learn about the cloud, and hopefully you know, they'll, they'll want to continue that career here in the, in the region and, and potentially come work for us someday. Well, and that's a very interesting concept, actually, you know, as, as we mentioned before we went on air, in the studio today, Jeff has um, uh, representatives and members of the South Bend Code School, and I'm sure they're talking more about what they're doing, mm -hmm. but you guys are actually, you're partnering with them because you're bringing that specific knowledge of creating technological solutions for AWS, which is a very popular platform. What are, who can come in here and get that schooling? How do, you, how do you go about it? Anyone can come in and get it. You can find us on the Next Path Consortium website, uh, fill out the form, apply for that training, start the training. We're going to offer it in Spanish. Uh, it's available in some, now multiple languages. It's instructed by one of our developers here at the company. So that's somebody who has years worth of cloud knowledge teaching cloud to anyone who's interested. So when you, and, and, and what is the cost of that for anyone that's interested? Thanks again to the Ready Grant. It is free, completely free. So let me get this straight. You guys are a company with a specific skill set in the technology industry. You are an Amazon premier partner, right? Am correct. I saying that correctly? That is correct. Which is a pretty high level of skill. Yes. And you are willing to give that to anyone that walk, that skill set to anyone that walks in the door yes. for free. Yes. How long does the training last? Uh, it's a 10 week program and it's one hour a week. Uh, that, that, is, that is the extent of what you have to commit to. So you commit 10 hours and you know, or you have a, a start in how you code for AWS and potential to start a new career. Correct. Uh, it's, think of Cloud 101 is what you're learning through this program. That's awesome. Well, Dave, thank you. That's really cool. I wish you the best of luck with it. I know South Bend Code School is doing a great job. You guys are that next level, that next level partner there. So thanks for showing us around and uh, have fun today. I appreciate it. Good Jeff, back to you. I'm sure you're not having as much fun as I am here, um, although maybe you're getting as schooled as I am, on how high technology jobs and skill sets are being brought to our region. George, thank you. Appreciate the additional insight. Always good to see you out in the field there. Um, guys, uh, as we wrap up, you know, kind of here in the studio side, we talked a little bit about the student side. You talked a little bit about what you're doing to help ed on educators, um, adults. Um, and, and so it's not too late. And no. so, t so talk to us, just let's focus our last few minutes on the adult side and kind of what's happening there. Sure. Absolutely. So um, a couple years ago, we had always had interest in an adult program. Um, Edu or adults who are looking for either a career change or just starting to dabble into, hey, I hear about this thing called computer science and coding, what does it entail? Um, and also, like you talked about, Jeff, the wages of careers in this tech field. Um, so we knew that there was a lot of opportunities out there, um, sometimes with a higher cost, but it was a single pathway that maybe somebody didn't want to go down and be like, okay, this is the only thing I know how to do, and it's not going to be really beneficial for them in this exploratory phase. So we developed a four week long adult coding program that's really going to highlight some of the key elements and languages that you would need in the workforce, um, especially in our region. Um, so I will let Alex talk a little bit more about those four verticals. Yeah, so if you, if you take the program, like Catlin mentioned, it's a month long, it meets once a week. Um, there, there are, each class it covers a different area. So the first one covers sort of UI UX development, which is like what you see on a web page. The second class covers more uh, logic-based programming, which is how you can interact with a web page. Then we cover databases, and then we cover server-side and cloud computing. Um, and really our goal with that is to help you identify what you have an affinity for in the space of web development. Um, and we have this class available right now. You can go to our website, southbendcodeschool.com and uh, find our adult education tab in there and you can sign up. The class is completely free. So anyone can sign up. You just have to have an internet connection somewhere and be able to join. It's all a virtual call right now. Um, we might be doing some in-person classes in the future. You know, keep checking in on us. We don't know. But um, yeah, anyone can sign up and you know, our, our goal through that is to help you 
learn a little bit more, maybe enough to say this is for me or this isn't for me, and here's what I'm interested within, in within the field. And uh, you know, then we can help point you to what comes next, depending on what you're interested in. So, so are the people you're seeing in that, are, these are folks who, are, um, employers in some cases have said, Catlin, I think have some great potential and I want her to go maybe get some of the skills, or, and, and people who say, I just want, and is there a little bit of like kind of people who want to do better and employers yeah. who want their employees to Absolutely. have some Absolutely, yeah, so we've had some employers who send us uh, people or a group of people, you know, they're like, it's just I want them to, to learn more about this. We've had um, individuals who are seriously considering a career change and want to learn more about what they're, they're getting into. Um, and then we've had people who think this is a great supplement to their resume and help them in their current job. Great. Well, some great work going on over at Southland Code School. Remind us again, if people want, are looking um, for kids, adults, teachers looking for these resources, best way to connect with you. On yeah, southbendcodeschool.com. And then we're on you know all the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, you name it. Uh, we're on there as SB Code School. Um, hit us up. Great. Well, we appreciate you guys being here and just talking a little bit about it today. We, thanks for the work you're doing and educating the next generation of workers. And we, we know our community is going to be better for it. So appreciate you doing that. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for our show today. On behalf of the entire team here at the PBS Michiana, thank you for watching or listening to our podcast. To watch this episode again or any of our past episodes, you can find Economic Outlook at WNIT.org or find our podcast on most major podcast platforms. We also encourage you to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. I'm Jeff Ray. I'll see you next time. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.